Now that we're on the path to mastering two-step equations, let's challenge ourselves by looking at two-step equations with fractions. Fractions do not change how we solve two-step equations. However, it does require you to remember your fraction skills, including addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. For addition subtraction, you need one very important thing, a common denominator. There are different shortcuts for finding the common denominator, but at its basic definition, the common denominator is the lowest common multiple. So I'm going to list out my multiples. 6 times 1, 6 times 2, 6 times 3, 6 times 4, 18 times 1, 18 times 2, etc. And find the smallest number, or the least common, number in both lists. So it has to be in both. I'm going to multiply 1 6 by 3 top and bottom. In order to get that 6 to become a 3, I need to multiply by 3. That's going to give me 3 18. 3 times 1 is 3. 6 times 3 is 18. I already have a denominator of 18 with 5 18 So I could think of it as multiplying by 1 or just not doing anything to it. Now that I have common denominators, I just need to look at my numerators. If you have common denominators, just add or subtract whatever's up top. 3 plus 5 gives me 8. The common denominator is also the final denominator. Notice I did not add 18 plus 18. I only add or subtract my numerators. The last step with any fraction problem is to solve. Now, if you have strong number sets and a good understanding of factors, you might be able to use the guess and check method. If I see 8 and 18, I know they're both even. I'm not sure if that's all of the factors that they share, but I know that they're definitely even. To confirm, I can write out the factors. I'm going to write out the factors of just the smaller number, 8. 1 times 8 makes 8, and I can check the other factors by climbing the mountain, we always say. So 1, 2, 3. 2 is a factor because 8 divided by 2 equals 4. 3 is not a factor. 8 divided by 3 gives me a decimal. 4 is the next factor, so I know I have all of my factors in line. 18 divided by 8 gives me a decimal. 18 divided by 4 gives me a decimal. 18 divided by 2 gives me a whole number, gives me 9. So that's how I know it's the greatest common factor. It is the biggest number, or the biggest factor, that goes into both my numerator and my denominator. I'm going to divide top and bottom by 2. 8 divided by 2 gives me 4. 18 divided by 2 gives me 9. On your own, go ahead and try 2 fifteenths minus 4 twelfths. Remember, whenever you add or subtract fractions, you need to begin with common denominators and end with simplifying. Multiplying fractions is often easier than adding and subtracting because we don't need common denominators. When you multiply, you just multiply straight across. Numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. So 2 times negative 6 gives me negative 12. Your negative rules still apply. If you multiply opposite signs, you get negative, same signs, positive. 5 times 3 gives me 15. You end every fraction problem by simplifying. Now you can use your guess and check method, you can use mental math if you're getting consistent answers. If you're not, try one of these methods. We call this the double mountain method. It's a great way to get all the factors from both my numerator and my denominator. So I'm gonna always start with one and one of the numbers. I'm gonna start with 12. To climb the mountain, I wanna find factors in order, 1, 2, 3, that go into 12. I can do this by just dividing. This is a calculator moment. 12 divided by 2 gives me 6. 12 divided by 3 gives me 4. The next factor I would have tried, 1, 2, 3, 4, is on the other side. So I know I have all of my factors of 12. I'm going to do the same thing with 15. It's a calculator moment. Start with 1 and 15. 15 divided by 2 gives me a decimal. 15 divided by 3 gives me 5. 15 divided by 4 gives me a decimal. 15 divided by 5, oh, 5's on the other side of the mountain. I have all my factors. I need to find the largest number that's in both of these lists. In this case, it's 3. 
My greatest common factor, or GCF, is positive 3. So I'm going to divide top and bottom, my numerator and my denominator, by 3. Negative 12 divided by positive 3 gives me negative 4. 15 divided by positive 3 gives me positive 5. I end up with negative 4 fifths. Watch those negatives. These are all calculator moments, but you need to make sure that you're plugging in the right signs. On your own, go ahead and try 6 fifths times 2 eighths. Remember, you do not need common denominators. Multiply your numerators, multiply your denomina denominators, and then simplify. Dividing fractions is just as easy as multiplying fractions. We just need to remember a little mantra. We need to keep it, change it, flip it, and then multiply it. Keep it. I'm going to keep the first fraction the same. So negative 4 sevenths becomes negative 4 sevenths. Notice I moved the negative sign up top. That way I know that negative 4 is going to be multiplied by something eventually. I'm going to change it. Change from division to multiplication. I'm going to flip it. I'm going to take the reciprocal of 2 thirds. So 2 thirds flipped becomes 3 halves. Now all you need to do is multiply your numerators. Negative 4 times positive 3 gives me negative 12. Multiply your denominators. 7 times 2 gives me 14. And now it's time to simplify. My number sense tells me that the GCF between 12 and 14 is 2. But if I wanted to double check, I could list out the factors of 12 and then divide to see if they go into 14. Or I could just list out the factors of both 12 and 14. 2 is the greatest common factor, the GCF. It's the biggest number in both lists of factors. So if I divide my numerator and my denominator by 2, I end up with negative 6 over 7, or negative 6 sevenths. On your own, apply what we just discussed to 12 fifteenths divided by 4 fifths. A little tip to make life easier, simplify 12 fifteenths first. When fractions are included in equations, it does not change the method we solve the equation with. We still start by asking, what is happening to the variable? We list out both operations in order, the order being the order of operations. We need to look at how the equation is put together. That variable is being multiplied by 2 thirds, and then we're adding 3 ninths. So we need to ask ourselves, how do you undo the operations. I need to write the inverse operations in the inverse order. So this equation is put together by multiplying x by 2 thirds and then adding 3 ninths. To undo that I need to subtract 3 ninths and then divide by 3 or 2 thirds. Whether you write that process out or think it out, you need to make sure that you're connecting your inverse operations to the order of operations. Now I can apply my first inverse operation to both sides of the equation. I'm going to subtract 3 ninths from both sides to keep things balanced. 3 ninths minus 3 ninths is 0. That's my identity. It cancels. 9 twelfths minus 3 ninths becomes a little bit more challenging when I evaluate each side of the equation. I know that when I add or subtract fractions, I need to have common denominators. When I evaluate, I need to remember my fraction skills. 3 ninths minus 3 ninths cancels, but 9 twelfths minus 3 ninths, I need common denominators. To find common denominators, I list out my multiples. 9 times 1 times 2 times 3 times 4. 12 times 1 times 2 times 3. 36 is the lowest or smallest number in both lists, the lowest common multiple. I'm going to find equivalent fractions based on these two fractions. 12 times 3 gives me 36, so 9 times 3 gives me 27. 9 times 4 gives me 36, so 4 times 3 gives me 12. 27 minus 12, because I'm only worried about the numerators once I have my common denominators, gives me 15 over 36. I'm going to keep my, all of my fraction work off to the side. That is the answer on the opposite side of the equation from the variable. That's what I got when I took 9 twelfths minus 3 ninths. That was on the right side of the equation, so I keep my 15 over 36 on the right side of my equation. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 2 thirds by applying my inverse or second inverse operation. 
When I divide 2 thirds by 2 thirds, I get x by itself. When I do 15 over 36 divided by 2 thirds, I need to remember to keep it, change it, and then flip it from 2 thirds to 3 halves. 15 times 3 and 36 times 2, those numbers seem kind of big. So I'm going to simplify 15 over 36 to 5 over 12. Sometimes simplifying like that makes problems a little bit more approachable. 5 times 3 gives me 15. 12 times 2 gives me 24. So x equals 15 over 24. At this point, I think I've gotten pretty good at simplifying. So I'm not going to have to write out those steps anymore unless I really struggle. My final answer is 5 eighths. For this equation, I start out the exact same way. I need to list out the operations that are affecting the, the variable in the order of operations. So first, I'm multiplying by negative 1 and 1 fourth, which I could rewrite as times negative 5 fourths. And then I'm adding 3 fifteenths. I'm not subtracting 3 fifteenths. That negative is attributed to the negative 1 and 1 fourth. To undo addition, I'm going to subtract. To undo multiplication, I'm going to divide. And I need to do it in that order. So I'm going to subtract 3 fifths from both sides. 3 fifths, or sorry, 3 fifteenths. 3 fifteenths minus 3 fifteenths gives me 0. So that cancels on the right. On the left, I need common denominators. I see that 12 and 15 have a common multiple of 60. So I could just find equivalent fractions with a common multiple of 60. If I don't see that common denominator, I can list out my multiples and find the lowest common multiple. I was right, it's 60. 15 over 60 plus negative 12 over 60. I turn subtraction into addition. Sometimes that helps with fractions. 15 plus negative 12 gives me 3. 3 over 60. That's equal to 3 twelves minus 3 fifteenths. I'm going to put that back in. That's what's on the left side of my equation. I'm going to undo that negative 1 and 1 fourth by dividing by the improper fraction version, negative 5 fourths. It cancels on the right, giving me x by itself. 3 sixtieths divided by negative 5 fourths needs to be turned into multiplication. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep 3 sixtieths. I'm going to change it from division to multiplication, and I'm going to flip it from negative 5 fourths and positive 4 over negative 5. Notice that negative sticks with the 5. It's a lot easier from when we multiply. 3 times 4 gives me 12. 6 times negative 5 gives me negative 300. If I want to simplify, I can either write out the methods we've seen before, or I know that in this case, 12 is the greatest common factor. So my simplified answer is negative 1 over 25, or 1 over negative 25. On your own, try this problem. Use as much written work as you need to get an accurate answer. If you find that you're not getting accurate answers, try some of the work organization and some of the methods that are being taught. Ultimately, if you find that fractions really are something you struggle with and that you really dislike, there is a method for getting rid of them equations. The first step, simplify. So it requires a couple other skills that you may need to rely on. I'm going to simplify. 4 24ths is 1 6. 5 over 25 is 1 5th. 9 over 27 is 1 3rd. So that required a little bit of number sense. So even though this is a shortcut, it requires you to have a lot of math sense. Now I'm going to multiply this whole fraction by the lowest common multiple. To find the lowest common multiple, I list out the multiples of each of these denominators, 6, 5, and 3. I just went through and, multi and uh, skip counted. 6 times 1 is 6, 6 times 2, etc. The lowest common or smallest number that's in all three of those lists is 30. I'm going to multiply the whole fraction by 30. Now instead of thinking in terms of fractions, I'm going to multiply 30 times my numerator and then divide by my denominator. So 30 times 1 is 30 divided by 6 is 5. 30 times 1 is 30 divided by 5 is 6 to give me 6x. 
30 times 1 is 30 divided by 3 to give me our minus 10. Now I just need to solve this problem. It's a two-step equation with whole numbers. The fractions are gone. We had to use a lot of fraction skills to get rid of them, but this equation is much more approachable now. I'm multiplying by 6. I'm subtracting 10, so I'm going to add 10 and divide by 6 to get my answer. I'm going to add 10 to both sides. It's going to be 15 equals 6x, and I'm going to divide both sides by 6. This is where you need to go back into fraction mode. 15 divided by 6, I'm not looking for a decimal. I'm looking for a fraction. After I go, th go through and simplify, my final answer is 2 and a half equals x. This shortcut is not at all required, but for people who really, really, really dislike fractions, it's a way to get around them. It still requires fraction skills, such as finding a lowest common multiple such as simplifying fractions.